What's up on Power Ass Crew? Today's video, you right there. Let me turn the jug around a little bit. Maybe you guys get a clue. Oh, okay. It's hard to do that through a viewfinder. MT90 is under the skid plate. What are we doing? We're changing fluid in the AX15 today. I've done this video in the past. Uh, I'm doing it again because there's some few little notes I want to tell you guys about. For one, this is better stuff. Uh, for two, in the past video, I showed you guys to use the uh, Lucas Oil Stabilizer. Don't ever use that stuff, okay? Don't use that junk in a transmission at all. Why not use Lucas? Because some people absolutely swear that stuff. Well, here's the deal. That Lucas is so thick, and then this fluid right here is so thick. As the transmission is spinning, the gears are doing their thing, stuff like that, the Lucas cavitates. Cavitate means it builds up air bubbles in the fluid. Air bubbles hold heat. And if you've got air bubbles in fluid, what don't you have? You don't have proper lubrication because you've got air bubbles in the fluid. So if you've got heat, that actually increases wear. You get the point. Now, the Redline MT90 isn't the only fluid on the market that works. you got your uh, Penzoil Synchro Mesh. That's good stuff. In a pinch, if you can't find anything else, you can use uh, 1030 Synthetic. 1030 Synthetic motor oil, okay? Not organic, not dinosaur oil. Not conventional oil, synthetic 1040. Uh, that'll get you by for a little bit. It's like if you got a transmission that needs to be cleaned out, I would run it for a couple sessions of 1030, then put some good stuff in, okay? Again, 1030 synthetic, not conventional, not regular motor oil, synthetic. Did I say synthetic? I just want to be sure I express that, okay? All right, enough of the gab. Let's show you guys how to do a trans uh, fluid change in a transmission. A15. Crap, you know what I'm saying. Let's do it. Key on, power. All right, now see how she acts. First gear, second gear, first gear. Of course, it's gonna act like it's got some sense now. Uh-oh, there it is. See, I let it roll up a little bit in second. Now I'm at first, it don't wanna go. So. And now I don't want to go into second, so let's go into third. Nope, oh, there it goes, it goes into third. So what I gotta do is let it roll out third a little bit. Clutch the first real quick, and it still don't want to go. Up oh, there, it goes into second. That's it first, there it goes. So, turn this thing off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the fluid in this transmission, see if it helps that situation any. Now, a while back, the clutch in this thing acted up. The fluid line, because hydraulic clutch, YJ's, this thing's got the internal slave cylinder. The fluid line separated, so I had to do this little uh, backyard fix thing to make it work like it's supposed to. And I'll tag that video where you guys can check it out. But one of the things that one of the commenters said, and you are exactly right, that I could have floated the gears on the way home. Well, as I said, the synchronizers in this transmission, can I float the gears? Yes, but I better time it perfect. Otherwise, it doesn't want to go in through the gears. So, I'm currently running 1030 synthetic motor oil in the transmission. Yes, you can do that. But it's not. It's one of those oils to where, kind of like your engine oil, you need to change it out every so often. Now, with running 1030 synthetic, synthetic, not dinosaur oil, not plain Jane conventional organic oil. Synthetic. Keep that in mind. That's the only thing motor oil style you want to run in your AX15s or AX5s. What I highly recommend is run like your Royal Purple manual transmissions, or today we're going to be using Redline MT90. We're going to put that in there. We're going to see how much difference it makes in the synchronizers and how well it shifts. So let's get to changing some fluids. If it acts like it's got some sense, then I'll make a video showing you guys how to float your gears. Because that actually comes in handy when you got clutch issues. Here's what you're going to need to get the job done. You want your drain pan, 24 millimeter socket, and well, if you want to, you can go the creeper style, but I know many times I've laid it on cardboard, carpet, whatever you can use, it doesn't matter. Crawl on under there. Okay, we're on the passenger side of the Jeep. We're going under the rig. And what we're after is right there. Notice how the exhaust comes around. Here's the front of your skid plate on the passenger side, 
right there is your drain plug. Now here's what's going to happen. You want to position your drain pan to where it'll catch this hole here and coming out of here. Because what happens when it gets to a certain point or even when it starts, it hits this lip right here and it ends up draining some down this way. So, yeah, it's going to get up into your skid plate. So have fun with that. It's a 24 millimeter. Take that out. Once you've got your ratchet in place, take your ratchet and go up. I'm taking my pinky holding the socket in place right now so I can hold the camera. Anyway, back it out. Once you get it so far out, you're going to have your fluid drain down in your pan. And remember, position your drain pan to catch this hole here and your drain plug there. Let's see what I mean. You got your main drain right here and you're going to have it dripping out right here. And as the stream gets less, it's going to want to run more to the skid plate. So that's why you want to make sure you get your drain pan catching here and there so you don't make a mess. And that stuff was a bit overdue to be changed. Now while the fluid's draining over there, let's check out the plug so we can be prepared to fill her back up. We're on the driver's side of the rig here. You go down and under. Exhaust. You would normally have a drive shaft right here, but I've got my drive shaft out at the moment. And here's your clutch line. Now depending on whether you got internal or external slave, this may look different. Mine's an internal slave. But right here is your fuel fill them up port. Edge of your skip plate, come up right there. Now, like I said, normally you'd have a drive shaft right here, but mine's out at the moment. Exhaust, bell housing, right there. Edge of your skip plate, it's almost right even in line with it. Just so you know, guess what size it is. Yep, you're right, 24 millimeter. Once you get to a gradual drip like that, you're pretty well there. Take your rag, wipe the seat off right there where the plug goes in. Clean your plug real well, screw it back in by hand, tighten it, but don't over tighten it. As soon as this thing makes contact, you just want to put your ratchet on it, give it a little bump snug, and you're good to go. Now here's what we're putting in. This is what we're putting it in with. Redline fully synthetic MT90 gear oil, GL4 high performance lubricant for manual transmissions and transaxles. Yes, good stuff here. And we're putting it in with this little transfer pump that I picked up at Harbor Freight, but I'll drop a link down below if you guys are interested. There'll be a link to this right here as well. You can also use bottles like this right here. What you'd have to do is pour the MT90 into a bottle like this and squeeze it out through the little nozzle right here. So it's kind of a pain in the tail, but it works. I've done that many several times, so that's yeah, up to you. But honestly, that little transfer pump right there, it does a great job. It's super easy, and you can pick them up really cheap at the Harbor Freight, or like I said, I'll drop a link for you guys to pick one up. Now, there's one thing I want to mention. This right here, okay, I'm going to show you this bottle. I'm going to show you what it is, but it is not for a Jeep. Notice where it says GL5? Do not, do not, do not use that in any of the transmissions for a Jeep. GL5 will chew up all your yellow metals, and that is your synchronizers. Uh, this was actually, I was doing the rear end on a uh, Fox Body Mustang, so that's where that came from. But I just want to show you mostly about the bottle. These little bottles right here, I save them. I'll pour that fluid like that into it from a big jug into the smaller one, put it into the uh, port as you're going to see underneath here, but the transfer uh, pump, I don't have to pour this into this to make that happen. I can pump it straight out of the jug and we're good to go. You'll need, for the transmission this thing, you'll need about four quarts. You won't use the whole thing, but you'll need about four quarts. Just take your little red hoses in the kit and just stick them in there like this right here. You can see that? Uh-huh. In end of the pump goes into the jug. The outside goes into your transmission. You're gonna feed that right up through here. And what you really want to do is like you see how hard that thing right there curves. It's actually a good thing for you because you want to take feed it in. You'll feel it hit us hit the gear set inside there. But it's pointing down just enough that it's going to fill the transmission up. But whenever you start pumping it, you'll see eventually the fluid start coming out. And why I say that curving down is a good thing, by doing the bottle method, like I showed you on that grease bottle a moment ago, it tends to put the nozzle right on top of the threads. So you, it's kind of deceiving sometimes if you don't get it inserted in there well enough that the fluid will run out the side track. And you'll think, okay, I've got enough fluid and it's time to stop. But with this transfer pump sticking in there like that, the hose actually goes in past the fill port and it actually fills up all the transmission. So whenever you do see it come out the fill port here, you know you're good then. And so from this point on, we're just going to pick that up and push it down. 
So right there, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push. And keep doing that until you get fluid in there. But I need both hands at the moment. Now that I've got the pump primed well, this handle right here gets really kind of hard to push because the fluid's so thick. So what you don't want to do is push a handle extremely hard like I'm going to make it get in there really fast because you'll build up the hydraulic pressure and you'll start popping your hoses off making a mess. So just let the pump do its job. Hey, easy gradual pressure. Pull it up. Pull it up. There you go. Push it down. Easy gradual pressure. It'll take a minute, but again, it's a lot faster than using the grease bottle method. Now, if you watch real close right here, you can see the line of the fluid level. Airspace, fluid. Airspace, fluid. Watch that line when I push the pump down. You can't put a whole lot of pressure on the pump, you know, except keep them blowing the hoses off right there. But you get so much volume out of each pump that you do it. It actually goes pretty decent. And you're going to get about 3.75 quarts in this baby. So I'm going to finish pumping it. I'll be back with you in a moment. Because right now, look, I've got no fluid running out the fill hole right here. See? Nothing is running out. So what I'll show you here in a minute is when the fluid starts running out the fill hole here, you'll know you're done. Now just a little side note for you because I was pumping away and I was getting the fluid up in there. Of course, it's not running out yet. See? All of a sudden, there are bubbles. Well, I ain't going to make the sound because it sounds kind of gross, honestly. Uh, let's just imagine the sound of too much Taco Bell and bathroom time. How's that? So, what happens is this hose wasn't down in there further enough, so I had to push down a little bit further because I was pulling air still fluid. So, every so often, either push that all the way down toward the bottom of it, or you may have to occasionally push the hose in. But whenever you hear the bubbles, your hose is not picking up fluid. Push it on down. Now, you can see right there. See the fluid running out? Transmission is officially full. You know, so this is a one gallon jug and right there is how much fluid I've got left in a one gallon jug. So like I said, I'll put a link in the description down below for you guys to pick this up and the pump. The pump does make life a lot easier and that is the proper fluid and you will get the uh, proper amount with a little bit left over. So what I recommend you do from here is take the holes out so you can have it running out like that. Take and try to tilt it down into the jug like this to minimize your mess. But you see I've got the run out right there. Now remember we'll pan over. There we go. Catch a little bit of that. Now I need my fill plug to put the fill plug in. So I'll be right back. Take your socket, tighten up your fill plug. What you'll do is you'll run it in until it makes contact. Then you take your socket, put it on there, and just give it a little bump. That's all you want to do. Until it makes contact, give it a little bump. You don't need it tight. So don't over tighten it because later on you try to take it off and you strip something out, you will regret it. So then just take the drag, clean up your mess. And that completes the oil change in an AX15 transmission. So everyone, if you enjoyed that video, hit a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave me some cool comments down below. Tell me what fluids you like to use in your AX15. And I think I said earlier in the video, it's going to take 3.75 quarts. So you'll need four quarts minimum, but if you buy a gallon like that, you'll have a little bit left over. And oftentimes by buying it in a larger bulk like this, you'll get it at a, at a cheaper price. So, something to consider. I'll put the link to the pump and this uh, red line fluid down in the description so you guys can check that out if you want some. Uh, again, I want to express those people who thump and hard and just totally praise the Lucas oil stuff, don't put it in your transmission. Other places, whatever. I mean, I would, I would not put it in a differential. I would not put it in a transmission, okay? I'm not a fan of the Lucas stuff. I'm really not, so up to you i know i'm gonna get bashed for that some people swear about the stuff but i don't so up to you okay did it make a difference let's find out key on contact start reverse first second Third, fourth, fifth, reverse. I had to change hands. So, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse. Put that will push a little bit. Ah! 
straps. Right now it's cold outside and that boot right there says not gonna stiff. It's not allowing the shift to come back like it wants to. Once the Jeep warms up and that boot warms up, it does just fine. Let's see, uh oh. Third, second, third, first. It's still a little bit notchy. Like I said, the synchronizers are done in this transmission. It is easier than it was before, but it still doesn't like first gear a whole lot. The third shift to straight to first. Yeah, I guess that's one thing I can show you guys real quick too. If you've got a transmission that the synchronizers are pretty well done in, like this one, like right, see it goes in first right there. Okay, I'm gonna let off of the clutch. Transmission's uh, spinning right now. But it is in neutral. So now it's go to first. See, it don't want to go to first. It don't like second, but it go into third. So what you do is, watch my feet over here, okay? I'm gonna lay off on the clutch slowly. Make it roll a little bit, and I'm in third. Let it roll a little bit. Clutch straight to first, it took it. Okay, watch this again. I'm gonna back up a little bit so I can get a little room in front of me. All right. Again, synchronizers are shot in this transmission. The oil that I put into it, or the red line, it definitely helped, it's a little bit easier. Okay, right now the gears are spinning, but nothing meshed because it's not in gear. Go to first. Okay, it don't want to go to first. It's not wanting second, but it'll take third. First and second gear synchronizers are done for it, like I said a moment ago. So here's the deal, watch this. I'm gonna lay down the clutch, watch my feet. The other clutch jeeps rolling a little bit, it's pulling, it's pulling, clutch. And I got first gear now. So, uh, people who like to drive my Jeep, I told them you really need to know how to drive a stick to drive this thing because the first and second gear synchronizers. And again, one more time. Spin the gears. It, uh, it took first that time. It took second. And that's the third, fourth, good. Try it one more time. Let out of the clutch. Spin the gears. It's in neutral, obviously. First, okay, see, it don't want first. Second, third. Third is definitely easier than it was. Okay, here's what we gotta do. I gotta get in first gear. I'll do it one more time. Watch my feet, and then watch the shifter. Clutch over here. I'm gonna take my foot completely off the gas. Okay, I'm rolling forward. The gears are in, the clutch is engaged, and I'm rolling forward a little bit. Clutch, boom, first gear. I'm in first. Obviously, one of these days I'm doing a transmission rebuild video, and it's going to be this one. I've got another transmission back there that I'll swap into it. I've got another AX15 that has the internal, uh, the external uh, slave cylinder. So I'll be changing all that out one of these days. I mean, I can drive this rig like it's no problem. Uh, the only people that have the driver's rig is uh, my buddy Wayne's uh, driven it, uh, my dad's driven it, and uh, I drive it, obviously. And they are all very, very avid stick shift drivers. They've driven anything you can just about dream of, okay? So this is not a big deal to them. But if you're not a fluent stick shift driver, I mean, like, driving just as well as you could in automatic, this rig's kind of hard to drive. Putting a red line oil into it, I think it did help, but I don't know for sure when I go drive it here in a little bit. You know what? Let's take this thing around the block and see if it drives any better. So I just got back and went around the block a little bit, and where the way my neighborhood's laid out, there's some gradual uphill inclines, some downhills, and stuff like that. So it kind of gave me a good feel of how the gears were meshing and from going to first, second, third, fourth, so on. Fourth is high as I ever got because, I mean, the neighborhood here. Now it's actually creeping in fourth, but I wanted to go through all the gears, well, except for fifth, that to see how it was engaging. Can I do floating the gears? Yes, it will now. So the red line fluid actually did make a difference in how it shifted. Uh, I can tell the difference in whenever I take off. It definitely, the shifter feel, holding my hand on the shifter, I feel a lot less vibration in it now. So the red line fluid actually was a great improvement. So if you got a transmission that's in really good shape, I think it, you know, doing the fluid change is gonna be excellent for you to help prolong the life of your transmission. Now this may give me some more life out of this one, but there's no question at all that first and second gear synchronizers are done for. 
Um, as you seen when I was playing with them earlier, you know, here in the driveway before I went around the block, how I'd put it in third, let out of the clutch easy enough to make it roll, then go to first. I've had to do that sitting on a you know, good incline like that. You got to know how to play that clutch timing and gas timing to make stuff like that happen. So again, to summarize, the fluid definitely made a difference. Going from first to second gear is definitely a lot smoother. From second to third gear, definitely a lot smoother. Less vibration through the shifter. I can uh, float my gears now. It's not smooth, but when I go from first to second to float it, floating gears means you shift gears without using clutch, for those of you who don't know. Um, I don't recommend you do that on a everyday basis. Don't do that on record, just don't, because your synchronizers will hate you after a while and you won't have any, so there you go. But in the event you have some kind of clutch issue where your clutch will not disengage, that is one of those times where knowing how to float the gears is very beneficial. So that'll be a later video. So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave school comments down below, and I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.